Hi, uh, my name is Craig Calvert. Um, I'm going to show you an example of a process that I've that I use in Pix Inside. I've used it several times now to solve a problem. I think a lot of people struggle with, and particularly those people who use uh, one-shot color cameras, and that is to try to pull out the blue and the green colors that are naturally actually in the nebula, but when you process the data, it pretty much looks just red in color because hydrogen alpha emission, the red color is very much dominant. So I'm going to show you an example here using um, what's called the jellyfish nebula, nebula that I captured over a couple of nights. Uh, it's, also ref uh, it's also referenced as Sharpless 248 and IC443. Anyway, I captured this over two nights. I used a Celestron C9.25 uh, uh, with Hyperstar 4, uh, which is a fast system. It, uh, the F ratio is 2.2, so I can capture uh, some images in a fairly short period of time. I use a one-shot color camera, which is the ASI 2600 MC Pro, and I use the uh, IDAS NBZ dual band filter which is designed for these fast systems. So I'm, I'm picking up that both the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen three emission lines. Um, I captured over two nights about 90, 300 second or five minute exposures. Now, most people would say with Hyperstar, five minutes is a long exposure time and it is. So let me begin with this process and this is back data. I use dynamic background extraction to remove the background or to minimize the background effect. And also I did a easy soft stretch to stretch it a little bit and star net to remove the stars. And you could use star exterminator. I guess that would work as well. I have both. I use star net in this example and I kept the star mask right here. So I make a duplicate and then I extracted the green and the blue channels from this. Now, what you can see is that there's actually some green and blue uh, colors within this nebula, even though you can't really see them because it's very much overwhelmingly red. Uh, there's not much, but there is some. And these are the colors that I want to try to bring out. So what the first thing I did was after I did this is I used pixel math, pixel math, I'll bring, pull that up again later. And I just added the two together in pixel math and created this, which is very bright, as you can see. Um, so this is really, I guess you would say, this is the equivalent of the oxygen three emission signal that's coming and that I'm detecting with my camera, the blue and green colors. I then stretched it uh, to get it to look a little more like that, because really I'm going to use this as a mask. That's my purpose of doing this. I'm going to use this as a mask on this. So I really want to, to highlight the, where the blue and green are, not everywhere else where it's not. So I, I, I stretched it to look a lot like this. And see this here? These are the remnants of very, very bright stars. I don't want to muck around with their colors. Um, so I actually, I could have done this a couple of different ways. I could have tried to use a mask, but instead I use what's called the clone stamp. And you can then pick a point like in the black area and use that to clone the areas that you want, in this case, to be black. You want to get rid of that white. And the result is that. So I thought that's all I did. I just removed them so that they wouldn't be, when I used it as a mask, they would not be uh, uh, affected by what I do. So let me, let me uh, iconize these two. So you can see this, uh, I already have a mask on here. I applied this mask to this. And you can see it here, let me uh, go up there. See, you can barely see it. You can see a little evidence of it around the edges. And that's again where the blue, green, blue and green colors are. So again, I'm gonna iconize these. And I'm gonna show you an example here. What I do then is I do curves transform. Now remember, where these, the blue and green are, it's already very bright. There's a lot of color there. There's a lot of red, there's, there's a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. So you don't wanna add more blue and green or you just really will blow it out. So what you wanna do is remove the red. So let's see what that kind of looks like. So all I'm gonna do is take the red down and the mask is on in this area and you'll start to see, I hope, over here, 
So notice the blue color, blue green color is coming out. It's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can see it. All right, I'll go back and you can see the blue green come out. All right. And I get then something, whoops, something that looks uh, kind of like, uh, let's see, right here, that. Okay, so I pulled out the blue and green colors. Uh, there may be a little bit of this white left that's just very, very intense, and that may be where it's almost blown out. I also diminished the red color somewhat because um, the mask isn't completely perfect. It's not like black and white, or in this case, red and white. So what I do then is I will, um, what I try to want to bring this red back out again. So I then take the this image and I extract the red channel, which I did. But I did more than that. I extracted the red channel. If I can see, if I'll, show, I'll go ahead and extract it. Image, extract, red. And you can see what it looks like. It's pretty nasty. It's very hazy. It's not, it's not very, it needs to be stretched. Um, there's this star here that you want to, again, remove. Uh, it's also very noisy. You can see all the, the fine detail, fine noise in there. So I did three things to this. Um, I'm going to close that. I, I, to, to that, I stretched it to, to get this more contrast Im contrasting image. I used the easy denoise script to remove the noise. And I did the same thing with the clone stamp again to remove the stars, those two remnants, the remaining elements of the stars. And then I apply it as a mask, and you can see it's already on. So let me iconize that. Again, curve transform. Now what I want to do is I want to bring up the red color because that the mask was was from the red the red channel. And I want to bring up the red color and let me open this up. And to some you can see that you can whoops bring up the red somewhat. Play around with it. I'm not on this thing. That always seems to happen. Okay, you can increase the red where the mask is. Okay. So what the result of that is maybe something like this. Okay, so now look what I've done. I've created, uh, I've not really touched these stars much any. They're pretty much the way they were. Uh, it's a, it's the background's a little has some color in it. It's a little bit noisy. It might not be quite as intense or a color as I'd like. So you go in and now you're doing the finishing of this, uh, processing it. You um, you can take the curves, transform, and adjust the color somewhat, adjust the intensity somewhat. You can try to remove the background a little bit with the histogram, stretching it a little bit more. Whatever works to get it to look good, to let it look maybe something sort of like that which is that those, those are the processes that I actually use. And then there's one last step, and that is pixel math. And you take the star mask here, plus this, add them together, apply, and you're done.